Welcome to the second video on the average rate of change and in this video we're going to be learning how to find the average rate of change if we're given a function and we're going to learn how to use our graphing calculator to help make this process super efficient. So remember the average rate of change this is the slope of that secant line so if we have a function f of x here and we were trying to find the average rate of change over an interval a to b what we're trying to do is we're trying to find the slope of this purple line and that purple line is called the secant line. So I can identify the two points on my f of x. At b my y value is going to be f at b and at a my y value is going to be f at a. So if I am trying to find the average rate of change I'm just trying to find the slope of that secant line so I would take my difference in my y so I would take f of b minus f of a, that's right there, over b minus a, that's right there. So our average rate of change when we're given a function is f of b minus f of a over b minus a. Let's look at an example. So based on data from 1998 to 2003, the poverty rate, percent of households with incomes below the poverty line, in the US can be approximated by this function here and the units here are percentage points and this function is really only valid for these values of X. So X here is the median household income in thousands of dollars. So for instance when the median household income is $38,000 you'd plug in 38 here and you'd get the poverty rate in terms of the percent of households that are actually below the poverty line. So what we're supposed to do first is we are supposed to find and interpret the average rate of change on the interval 39 to 39.5 and round our answer to two decimal places. So in this problem and in many other problems we're going to have to find the average rate of change over and over in lots of different situations and so we want to come up with a fast and efficient to, way to do this. I'm going to show you a way to use your calculator to find this average rate of change. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to put this function p of x into your y1. So First we're going to press y equals and you'll see here that I have my y1 in there. I'm going to clear it out and put it in again. So I'm going to have 0 0.092. My x is right here and it's going to be x squared minus 8.1x plus 190. So I have my function in my y1 and then we're going to quit out of here and go back out to the calculation screen or the home screen. So second mode gets us to quit. So I'm out in my calculation screen now. Now that y1 can be used like a function notation. So for instance if we wanted to find p at 39, what I could do is I could do y1 at 39. So let's do that first just so you can see how this works. So to get y1 you're going to press the vars key because it's a variable. These instructions are all down here. We're going to right arrow over to y vars and we want function variables because we're dealing with functions and then we want y1 and then I'm going to put a set of parentheses and the number that I'm looking at inside just like I would use function notation. So this here would say that when the median household income is $39,000 the poverty rate is 14.032 percent so 14.032 percent of all the households lie below that poverty line. So we actually don't want to find just y1 at 39 we want to find the average rate of change over that interval. So we're trying to find p of 39.5 minus p of 39 over 39.5 minus 39. So when we're trying to find that average rate of change you're taking the y value minus the y value 
over the x value minus the x value. I'm not using p. In my calculator, I'm using y1. So this is the calculation right here that I want to put into my calculator. Now notice that I've got a set of parentheses around my numerator. So I have that parenthesis there and this parenthesis here. And then I have another set of parentheses here and one here. Whenever you have more than one term in the numerator or more than one term or factor in the denominator, you need to have parentheses around it. And it's always a good idea to, when in doubt, put them in and then you'll be covered. I'm going to have open parentheses. I'm going to type this in exactly like I see it. Remember to get y1, we're going to put vars y vars function y1 and then I'm going to put 39.5 close my input parentheses minus see if you remember how to get y1 again yep you press vars y vars right arrow the y vars enter on function enter on y1 and this time we want 39 close parentheses and now I'm ready to close the parentheses for my numerator divided by now I have more than one thing in my denominator so I'm going to put parentheses around that you could probably just do that calculation in your head 39.5 minus 39 is just 0.5 but let's just see what it looks like here and then press enter and this is what I get so my average rate of change is going to be negative 0.88 if I round to two decimal places. Okay, so let's, does this make sense? Are we expecting it to be negative? So as the values of x increase, as the median household income increases, are you expecting the poverty rate to be going down? I, I would hope so. Having this average rate of change being negative is what we would expect. So let's write a sentence. So we're looking at 39 to 39.5. So that's going to represent the median household income. So we're going to say when the median household income is between 39, remember those are in thousand dollars, and 39.5, so that would be $39,500. Next is the what. So the what is the poverty rate. We're talking about the poverty rate. Next is increasing or decreasing. So it's decreasing since our slope is negative at an average rate of, we're going to put 0 0.88 percentage points. So this 0.88, we're leaving off the negative because I have that word decreasing already indicating that negative slope. Our units of our P are percentage points, and then we need a per, and then the units of our X are in thousand dollars. So we could say per thousand dollars. So that's one way to say that. Sometimes that can seem a little bit confusing. So I'm going to give you another way to put this second part of those units. So we could say it's decreasing at a rate of 0.88 percentage points, and then we could say for each additional thousand dollars in median household income. So those are that's two ways that you could write that sentence. Both are perfectly fine. Okay, so now let's look at part B. In part B it says use the technology to complete the following table. So we've actually found this first average rate of change. This first one was negative 0.88 if we rounded to two decimal places. And let's find these others. For simplicity's sake, I am going to redo my typing of this. First, I want to have this calculation done. For every single one of these, that value in the denominator is 0.5. And then the second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make all of these numbers here have a tenth place. And the reason why I do that is because if I have some that are only two digits in length and some that are three digits in length, then I have to stick my calculator into insert mode when I go to edit it, edit my lines, and that can be uh, harder than just putting in the, the all three, putting in that tenth place for all the values. So what we're going to do is we're going to enter this in. So remember, we always have that parentheses first. We're going to have vars y1 of 39.5, close 
close parentheses, minus y1 Open the input parentheses, 39.0, close the parentheses, close the parentheses for the numerator, divided by 0.5. Okay, and there I get that value. So we've done that first one. Now let me show you something cool. Our calculator saves what we've done previously. So there's two ways that you can get it on this calculator, but on the, the older calculators you can only do it on one way. So I'm going to show you both ways. So if you press second enter, notice that the previous line comes up. If I wanted to get the line before that, I could press second enter again. If the line before that, I could press second enter again. So if I wanted to if I pull up that previous line, what I can do is I can go over here and just edit things. So this time I'm going from 40 to 39.5. So I'm going to have 40 here, 40.0 to 39.5. Now you have to be careful that you always take the bigger minus the smaller so that you don't um, mess up the sign of things. And then just press enter. All I had to do was change those that one little number. So my, my new value is negative 0 0.77 or 79. So let me show you another way. So on these newer calculators, and you can tell if you have a newer calculator by how it treats exponents. So for instance, if I typed 2 cubed, I would put 2 exponent cubed. See how it puts my cube up in the exponent? In the older calculators, it'll actually just look like this, 2 caret 3. So that means you have an older calculator. If you have something like this, you have a newer calculator. Okay, so now watch what happens. I can use my up arrow to grab the line I want in the newer calculators. So I'd go up, that's not what I want. Up, that's not what I want. Up, that's not what I want. That's the one I want. Press enter, and now I can go in and edit it. So that would be, we would go 40.5 minus y1 at, whoops, 40. Point zero. So this time I have negative 0.694. If I had the older calculator, I just do second enter and then second enter until I get to the one I want. And if I have the newer calculator, I can just up arrow. Pause the video and complete these last three. Okay, so did you get all of these values in your average rate of change table? Let's move on to the next one. Let's write a sentence to interpret the average rate of change of p over the interval 40 to 40.5. So here's our original statement of our problem. Here's the, when interpreting a sentence, you need to include these parts format. I want you to see if you can write that sentence. We've done this previously once in this problem already, but see if you can do it for this one. So here's my sentence. It says, when the median household income is between $40,000 and $40,500, the poverty rate is decreasing, and again it's decreasing because our average rate of change is negative, at an average rate of 0.69 percentage points for each additional $1,000 in household income. Let's go on to this last, these last two questions. It says, as the median household income rises, the poverty rate, okay, increases, decreases, increasing, then decreases, or decreases, then increases. Okay, so we're asking us about what happens to the poverty rate as the median household income rises. So as your household income goes up, what happens to that poverty rate? Does it go down? Does it go up? Does it go up, then down, down, then up? If you think about this just in terms of common sense, if the household income gets larger, then fewer people are living below that poverty rate, and so that poverty rate is going to decrease. So our correct answer here is D. Let's look at how we would see this on the calculator, though. So one thing you could do is you could have your function in Y1, and we had that previously. We could set our window, 
So our x's only went from 38 to 44. That's the only place that this model made sense. So I'm going to make x min be 38, x max be 44. I'm going to make x scale be 1. That's how frequently we have tick marks. And then uh, we could zoom fit, or we could, I, I just picked these values. Let's try zoom fit. Go zoom, and then way down here to option 0. This will pick the y values, the y min and the y max for me, based on that x min and x max. Let's look at this question again. As the median household income rises, so as x gets bigger, what's happening to our poverty rate? Our poverty rate is our y values. So our y values are getting smaller, so they're decreasing. Notice they're not actually asking us about the average rate of change in this problem. Even though we have that word rate, this isn't an average rate of change. They're just asking us what is that actual function doing? Is it increasing, decreasing, increasing, then decreasing, decreasing, then increasing? And in fact, it's decreasing. As the median household income increases, the effect on the poverty rate is more pronounced or less pronounced. So before you answer this, think about this in terms of just common sense. As the household income increases, that little bit of extra income, is that having a big effect on that poverty rate or is it having a small effect? And how is that effect changing? So over here, if we increase by $1,000 in our median household income, see there's a pretty big drop in that poverty rate. But as we look over here, if we go 42 to 43, that poverty rate doesn't go down near as much as it did over here. So over here, that extra $1,000 in income had a much bigger impact than it does over here. So what happens? Is that Does that have a more pronounced or a less pronounced effect? And I think that the correct answer here is less pronounced. So in the next video, we're going to be looking at not average rate of change, but be looking at the instantaneous rate of change.